Okay, so 4.6. Now we come off of that, and we're into the next thing. That's algebra. That's the way algebra goes. You're out of one concept. You're into the next one. So, again, every, every night when you try to figure out homework, you can't say, I'll take tonight off. I'll worry about it tomorrow because the next day, new concept. Okay, absolute value. We talked about it in the past. Distance a number is away from zero. Right? Distance a number is away from zero. Um, when you have a situation where the variable is in the absolute value, then something begins to happen. So let me scroll down a little bit here before we write that first part and look at number one. We have the absolute value of x equals 3. You see that there? So can somebody tell me what the value of x is? What is the value of x? Raquel? Well, if x were a 1, you would have the absolute value of 1 equals 3, and therefore 1 equals 3, and that would be false. So good thought, at least you're thinking, but that does not solve the absolute value equation. Andrew? 3. All right, so let me show you that again. Don't write this. We're going to write in a minute. I'm just trying to get you guys to understand before we write the top part. So now Andrew says the absolute value of 3 equals 3. And again, I'm going to do the left side. What is the absolute value of 3? The right side says it's supposed to equal 3. That's true, so that is a solution. Is that the only solution? Is that the only solution, Josh? Josh says, what about negative 3? So let's test Josh's theorem. So we stick in negative 3. What's the absolute value of negative 3? It's a 3, and oh, lo and behold, negative 3 works as well. Ah, there were two solutions. Two things solve that. Because absolute value is the distance a number is away from 0. Remember, you got that 3, 3 away from 0 on the positive side, its distance is 3. But you also got that negative 3, it's 3 away from 0. And its distance also three. You have two solutions. You have to come up with a model for the math of that. So here's what we do. We say the absolute value of n equals n if n is greater than or equal to zero. Now all that means is zero or positive. Don't get caught up in what greater than or equal to zero means. That's just a fancy way of saying if the variable's value is zero or bigger. Positive, right? Positive number. Now, mathematically, mathematically, I need to get to that three. So don't write this. Let me again use the example we just did, right? Don't write this. So if I had a negative three, I need to find a way mathematically to get that to equal 3. Well, what if I mathematically stuck an, a negative in front of what is inside the absolute value? Isn't negative that negative 3 a positive 3? Doesn't it get me that other solution? So in our, if this were a variable, though, it would be an n, correct? And therefore, I would say negative whatever n is. And that's this second part. Negative n, if the n is less than 0, simply meaning if it's negative. Again, we're figuring out mathematically how to get the two solutions. That's all that's trying to say. Now, is that going to be 100% clear to everyone in the room? No. Does it matter? It, honestly, it doesn't matter. So some of you, that's clear, and you understand what I just said, and it makes sense to you. Okay, good. If it doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. That's kind of the theory of what we're going to do. Let me show you the practice of it. The practice is a lot easier to understand than the theory, okay? So what we have to do is we have to figure out a way mathematically to come up with those two solutions. That's the bottom line that you got to keep in your mind. 
we got to come up with a way mathematically to get those two solutions, and it's not that bad. Okay, so absolute value equations have, and I'm going to use my red here, that's a very good short answer question on a quiz or test, two solutions. That should be in your brain. So when you come across an absolute value equation, your brain should immediately say, well, there are two solutions. Now, will everyone's brain say that? No. And how many in here will give me one solution to the absolute value equation? Unfortunately, some. And you're going to be wrong because there's two solutions. But I dare say everybody that's brain says absolute value, there's two solutions, will then remember, okay, I remember there's two things I got to do to get those solutions. So there's a really important thought, and it needs to be in your brain, and you need to have it every time you look at an absolute value. Okay, so as we've already determined, the absolute value of x equals 3 implies x equals 3 or x equals negative 3. Right? And we just went through that those are both solutions. Now, you can write it like that as an answer, x equals 3 or x equals negative 3, or mathematicians love to write as little as possible, and so do students in the year 2015. And so you can write it together as one thing, plus minus 3. Plus minus 3 means x equals 3, x equals negative 3. It's a way of writing it together as one thing. Okay? You can do it either way. But you should understand if you see a plus minus three, that's what it means. Ethan. Yes. However, I will tell you this, Ethan, not every absolute value equation is so simplistic that the answer is plus or minus the same number. That's only for very simplistic ones. A lot of times the answer will be x equal three, x equal negative seven. They're different because the equation is a little more complicated, and you'll see that, okay? Not complicated to solve, just not as simplistic. Okay, so how do you solve? Pretty easy. You guys are going to know these steps. First thing you're going to do is isolate, not the variable, you can't do that yet, the absolute value. We know how to do that, right? Isolate the absolute value. We can do that. Next, you need to write the two equations. See, but you're thinking absolute value, and you're thinking two equations. That's good, because if you're thinking write two equations, then you'll write two equations, I hope. And then, of course, finish by solving the two equations. So every absolute value in equal, um, equation is two problems in one. All right, awesome, two for one. Don't you love two for one? Mr. Cormican likes two for one. Buy one, get one free. There you go. It's awesome. Especially when it's food. All right. So two for one. So that's great. Easy. So let's go through some examples. All right. So you're looking at the first one here. And again, this is a little bit more complicated, isn't it? I don't think it's hard. Let me go higher for you guys. I don't think it's hard, but it is a little bit more complicated. But you know what? We know what to do. So here, your brain looks at this and you say, ooh, absolute value equation. There are two solutions. What do I have to do first? I have to isolate the absolute value. Can somebody raise your hand? Now, I've never told you this before, but I'm confident somebody could raise your hand and tell me what that means. Adam? Abby? Well, tell me, tell me just generally, just general words. What does it mean to isolate the absolute value? That's all I'm after. Go ahead. True, you're telling me how to isolate it. I agree, and you're, that's all correct. But what does it just mean to isolate it? Kaylin? Get it by itself on one side of the equal sign, right? Just like isolate the variable. We're going to get – so look, I'm trying to get this all by itself – on one side. And why don't I go ahead and get it on the left-hand side, right? I'm trying to isolate that, the absolute value part. Okay, so, Abby, now, what do you want to do to isolate that absolute value? 
So Abby says, hey, let's move the thing, add it to the absolute value, right? Just like we move the thing, add it to the variable. And here's where we're at right now. The absolute value of x plus 1 equals 8. Nobody is stunned by that, are they? That, that hasn't given anybody heartache, right? We just simply move the negative 3. Okay. We have done step number 1. We have isolated the absolute value. Step 1 is done. Time now for the two equations. So again, this is number 1. ISO the rad. I love that. ISO the rad. No, I'm ahead of myself. ISO the ab, not ISO the rad. All right, I'm thinking radical equations. We're not there yet. That's when we ISO the rad. We got to ISO the ab first. All right, the absolute value, ISO the ab. All right, yeah, sit ups. That'll do it. ISO the abs. Get a six pack, eight pack, 34 pack. 59 pack. All right. At this point now, number two, I'm going to do this off to the right here. Number two, we're now ready to make our two equations. So I'm going to abbreviate there, make two equations. Make two equations. Okay. Equation one is easy. Simply remove the absolute value. Just remove it. Just get rid of it. It's easy. We're assuming in this one that the absolute value ends up being a positive number, and therefore we just leave the other side as it is. In the second equation, we remove the absolute value, and we put that negative in front of what it equals. So here's our first. We simply remove the absolute value. Here's our second. We move the absolute value. We put a negative in the front. Not too bad. All right, let's finish these off. One on the left, add a negative one to both sides. We get a solution of x equals 7. Solve the one on the right. We add a negative one to both sides. And we get x equals negative 9. And there are two solutions. Say, so Mr. Scarpy, those are the two solutions? Yeah, those are the two solutions. Now, look, remember, any equation and stuff, you can always put the values back in and see if you got it right, which is what you should be doing on quiz and tests after you finish the whole quiz and test, right? All right, so mental math. Stick 7 in for the x. Look at the original. I'm looking right here, right? You guys with me? Okay. So as we stick in that 7, 7 plus 1 is 8. The absolute value of 8 is 8 minus 3 is 5 equals 5. Good. Check. That one worked. Let's do the negative 9. Negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. The absolute value of negative 8 is 8 minus 3 is 5 equals 5. Oh, the other answer. We found the two solutions. Not too bad, not too hard. Look at example B. And again, raise your hand if you got questions as we go. I look at B and I say, oh, I've got a absolute value equation. I got to ISO the ab. So I look at this one, and what would you like to do? Somebody raise your hand and tell me what you'd like to do. Josh, what do you mean divide two? Yep, I'll divide both sides by the two, right? Josh is out to ISO the ab. In this one, we have something multiplied times the absolute value, right? And how do we always move something multiplied? By multiplying by the reciprocal or doing the shortcut, which is to simply divide both sides by it. So hopefully you agree we're at 4n minus 2 equals 6. So we just ISO the ab. What's next? Say it if you know it. What's next? Two equations. Somebody raise your hand and tell me how to make the first one. Ethan? You mean 4n minus 2? That's it? It's that easy? That's all? All you did was get rid of the absolute value. That's all I got to do for the first one? 
uh, you're supposed to say yes. Yes. Right? It's, that's not hard. Remove the absolute value. Somebody tell me how to do the second one, Raquel. And that's all you're doing on the second one. You're sticking a negative in front of whatever else is on that other side. 4n minus 2 equals negative 6. All right. Solve the two equations again for time's sake. On the right, let's add a positive 2 to both sides. You get 4n equals 8. Let's divide both sides by 4. And we got n equals 2. So we added 2 to both sides. We divided both sides by 4, and we get n equals 2. Right-hand side, again, we're going to add a positive 2 to both sides. We get 4n equals negative 4. Again, we're going to divide both sides by 4, and we end up with n equals negative 1. Do we like our solutions? Go back to the regular. All right, again, don't worry about all those twos we crossed out. There's your original, right? Let's do the two first. Four times two is eight. Eight minus two is six. The absolute value of six is six. Two times six is 12. It worked, didn't it? What is the other number going to make the absolute value inside B? So I just ended up with the absolute value of 6 is 6. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 equals 12. What's the other number? What is the n minus 1 going to end up making the absolute value be? Well, the negative 6, right? Because the absolute value of the negative 6 is 6. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 equals 12. And you get the second one. All right, got to move on. There's a couple more things i got to get to. Okay. If when... The absolute value is isolated. If you isolate the half, and the other side is. All right, now you haven't made the two equations yet. All you've done is iso the half. What happens if the other side is negative? What happens if the other side is negative? All right, I'm going to let you guys figure it out. just want you to look at the screen. Don't write just... Put your thinking cap on. Let's go real simplistic. Don't write this. Just think. Absolute value of n equals negative 1. That is the scenario, right? The ab is isoed and the other side is negative. Yes? We haven't made two equations yet. We're not to that step yet. We just isoed the ab and the other side is negative. Can somebody give me a value for n that will work? Let me raise your hand and give me a value for n that will solve this absolute value equation. Adam? Nothing? What about negative 1? What about 1? Right? And the answer is exactly that. No matter what value you find, you can't end up with a negative answer. Why not? Why can't we end up with a negative answer? Kirsten, because absolute value is the distance from zero, and distance is always positive. You can't end up with a negative. So, therefore, the solution is no solution. And you can just write the null set, right? And hopefully now that makes sense to you. You can't end up, you can't take the absolute value of something and get a negative number. All right, so let's suppose you come up against really, really difficult absolute value equation. You say piece of cake. Things added to the ab. I move by adding its opposite to both sides. I'm going to add a negative 4 to both sides. So my next line, negative 3 times the absolute value of n plus 1 equals 5. And I'm out to ISO the ab, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. And before I go any further, I look on the right, and what do I see? Negative 5 thirds. Do I do anything more? No. Don't waste your time. You can go back and make sure you didn't make a mistake, but 
You're not going to you're not waste your time. Do not split it up into two things. The math will give you an answer, but they will not be true. You can finish this if you want. The math will give you answers, but I'm telling you, they will not work. Nothing works because there's no way to get an absolute value to equal a negative number. At this point, you say no solution or the null set. That's it. You're done because the right-hand side is negative. All right, now be careful. Sometimes it'll look like it's negative and it's not. I don't have time for you to write this, but just look. Let's suppose we had something like this. Um, the absolute value of x minus 3 um, minus 7 equals negative 4. Okay, don't say already, oh, no solution, it equals a negative. Because we haven't ISOed the AB yet, right? It's not until you ISO the AB that you look. So this is going to have a solution, right? Because you're going to add 7 to both sides. That one will work. So just be careful. Don't get too crazy and see a negative on the other side. Say, oh, that's it. It's going to be a negative. I don't have to worry about it. you got to ISO the AB first before you determine if the other side's negative. Make sense? Okay. Let's get now to the abstract part. We have a form, and this form is, I wish I had another 15 minutes because this form is amazing. We are going to learn that math has a pattern to it that is going to allow us to figure things out like the absolute value equation. We're going to figure out how to um, graph parabolas, ellipses, hyperbolas, um, uh, all kind of polynomials, all kinds of stuff. And this, take your red and write an H. H keeps coming up. And in everything else, the other thing is, on the other side is a K, but in this case, it's going to be a D. And we're going to see how this stuff keeps coming up. All right, take your red. Let's write what H is. This is awesome. This is the coordinate of the midpoint. So it's the midpoint coordinate. H is the midpoint coordinate. D is the distance from the midpoint to either endpoint. Distance from midpoint to either endpoint. Distance from the midpoint to either endpoint. I'll show you all this and what it means in a moment. So note, the coordinates of the endpoints are the values of the solution to the absolute value equation. We actually have an alternate way to solve absolute value equations, if we know that. Okay. Now again, this is a simplistic form, but in these simplistic ones, it works. So let me show you what I mean. Look at A here. The 4 is where the H is. Do you agree? And therefore, we know the coordinates of the midpoint... And midpoint is like a uh, italicized M. There's no good symbol for it. Would you agree the coordinate of the midpoint is 4? Let's look at this on a number line. Just stick a 4 kind of in the middle of your number line. What does the 2 tell me to do? It says go 2 on one side of that midpoint, right? And that 2 tells me go 2 on the other side of, the mid mid of that midpoint. So what are our solutions? Our solutions, which are the same as the endpoints, are 2 and 6. The solutions, which are the same as our endpoints, are 2 and 
six. Now, how would you do that? That's by visual, right? This is by picture. This is how to do the solution by a picture. How would you do the solution by math? You would take the four, and first you would add two, right? Because I'm going two past it, and get six. And the second time you would take four, and go left two, which is a negative two, right? And get two. And that's how you do it mathematically. The first time you would add two to get six, and the second time you would take away two and get two. Hey, those are the solutions that absolute value, two and six. They solve it. Pretty amazing. All right, again, I got to go fast here. I'm just going to, this one, would you agree the midpoint is seven? Can somebody just raise your hand and tell me the value of the endpoints? Catching on? Value of the endpoints, Andrew? Seven minus ten is? Negative three. Right? Andrew started at seven. He added the 10 to go 10 to the right, 17. Now you got to start at 7. You got to go 10 left. 7 minus 10 is negative 3. Now, again, you can draw yourself a little number line if you want and go 10 right, 10 left. Or you can do 7 plus 10, 17. 7 minus 10, negative 3. Visual, mathematical. Visual, mathematical. Do the way that makes sense to your brain. All right, I got to show you one more thing here. And unfortunately, I'm not going to get to D. You're going to have to look at the book for D. I'll show it real quick. All right, look, do this in your notes. Use your black here. If I put this in the right form, this is technically X minus a minus 3. Because that's the right form, isn't it? Look at the formula up here. Isn't it X minus, and then you read the H value? It's got to be a minus to read the H value. So technically, H is what? Negative 3. The midpoint on this one is negative 3. Be careful of that. We'll see this principle all the way through parabolas, ellipses, hyperbolas, cycles, all kinds of things. Uh, polynomials. And look, let me show you how you do this one. Divide everything by 3. We got to get rid of that three in front of the x. So this one ends up with x minus three. Absolute value of x minus three equals six. And now you're able to figure out your midpoint and distance, right? What's the midpoint? Three. What's the distance? Six. Anyone that's having trouble with these concepts, because I know I did go fast. You've got a book. You've got text. You read the text. I'll also post the video. Take some time, maybe look back over it, all right? Those concepts aren't difficult, but I did go fast, so take advantage of that.